Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the Everton News Daily. Sean Dyche has given his pre-match press conference ahead of Everton's trip to Chelsea on Monday. It seems ages away when they have these press conferences this early, but there you go. Uh, what he did confirm in it was that Amadou Onana was back in training. Uh, Adrissa Garner Gay is back in full training following um, the, his wife giving birth at the weekend, which meant he missed the win over Burnley. And Arna Dan Juma is a, will play in a bounce game, as they call it, tomorrow. But he has been training with the first team. So that was some good news for uh, getting players back. However, he did say that James Garner didn't train today because he got a knock. Uh, and he also said that Dominic Calvert-Lewin didn't train. There's more on Dominic Calvert-Lewin in this clip. Check it out now. Yeah, he's back training. He's been training today. Um, Jimmy Garner got a knock today. We're happy it's just a knock. Um, Dom didn't train today, but we're, we're pretty positive with uh, settling him down over the next couple of days. So we're just having to um, watch the players and make sure they're right going forwards. You mentioned Dominic didn't train. What was, what was the issue? Yeah, he's just got a minor sort of niggly hamstring, which we've just been ultra careful with. Uh, but he thinks he's on top of it and the, the medical team are as well. So mostly we've just got knocks at the minute, so nothing at this stage that we think is going to affect uh, Monday against Chelsea. There you go. We could do with uh, everyone being fit. We have got seven huge games coming up and uh, we need everybody fit. Don with the hamstring injury is a bit of a worry. have to wait and see how that one settles down. Uh, it was the first press conference or the first time the manager spoke to the press following Everton's two points that were deducted on Monday. Uh, the manager was asked what his thoughts were on this latest points deduction for Evan. Um, I think similar to the last, you know, it's um, unexpected in the sense that we thought it had been dealt with. It obviously wasn't or it hasn't been. And obviously the, the time, uh, the window to possibly appeal. So the club will be looking into that. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, the, the last response was what's done is done. The league table changes. Um, we know, or we're, we're very, very confident. We've been told it won't change again as regards anything this season. Um, so, therefore, our focus is on the next round of games, you know, coming up after after the news. And I spoke to the players about it, reminded the staff about it, reminded the truth of the moment, which is to stay focused on the job in hand. There you go. There you go. We're still all reeling from it. Clearly, Sean Dyche is looking a little bit annoyed with it all now, as you would do. Um, one player who played at the weekend in the absence of Patricia Garner Gate and Amadou Omrana was Andre Gomez who was he's had a season of injury but he has been available of late and, and played a 90 minute game for the first time for Everton in a long long while uh, Sean Dyche has been impressed with him this is what he had to say about the form of Andre Gomez yeah, it's been hard for him with all the, 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 the ups and downs of injury. Um, I made it clear when he came back to in the summer that I felt he could be an important part of us. And he's been so unlucky. Um, he delivered a very good physical performance, someone hadn't played in so long. Um, we know he's got quality and he certainly put himself right back in the frame for, for what we need going forwards. And he does give you something a little bit different, doesn't he? Yeah, he's a, he's a very good technical player. Um, and he's know-how as well. He's a knowledgeable player and I think that's helpful. Um, in our group at the moment and uh, you know there's a calmness about his play uh, and hopefully as long as he stays fit he's certainly been fit this week and working hard and I think he enjoyed it as well locking in the full game you know it's been hard for him and I think he enjoyed the challenge of it Today the Premier League announced new PSR rules uh, they're going to shadow the current set of rules for the next season apparently before replacing them um, the new rules require that a club is only allowed to spend 85% of its revenue on players, staff and agents fees. <coughs> Excuse me. Players, staff and agents, player transfer, staff and agents fees. Um, the clubs have voted for this. It will be ratified in June at the Premier League AGM. It's the current system, as we all know by now, uh, allows a club to lose uh, 105 million over a three year period, but it will be replaced by this. This is more in line with UEFA's model for financial fair play. Ultimately, for any club outside the top six, it doesn't really help in their quest to close revenue streams uh, on the top, on the, the big six, not the top six, or the important six to Sky. Um, because obviously, those clubs who've been get more money than everybody else and have already got bigger revenue streams than everybody else, then 
it means they can spend a lot more. Everybody else has got to try and catch up. It's still really, really difficult. But that's the way it is. And these rules, like I said, will come in. I think it's the 25, 26 season that it is just them alone. I think next season you're getting a bit of both. Um, but this will be voted on uh, finally and ratified in June at the ATM. And the Premier League have also today announced that they'll be using the semi-automated offside system from next season. The caveat to that being, it'll be implemented after the first couple of international breaks, so they don't know whether they're going to implement it in September, the one in October, or the one in November. That doesn't make any sense to me. Why aren't they just implementing it on day one in August? So again, you will be playing in a season that will kick off in August and the rules could have changed how they do things by the time you get to October or November. It is like they're on a... um, the hell-bent on making the league lack as much integrity as possible. I just It's like self-harm to the league. I, I just don't, don't understand it. The current system is better than what we have. There's no question about that. It's already being used in this year's Champions League. It was used last year as well. Uh, it was used in the World Cup successfully, and it will be used this summer in the European Championships in Germany. Serie A use it as well. It's basically, for the most part, negates... The fellas getting the, the Crayola pens out and trying to do wiggly lines to catch it offside. Uh, it will be closer to like the goal line technology system. The reason why it's not fully automated is because right now the technology can't see through a multiple of bodies. But I've seen lots of games where it's used. I'm not sure I've seen one where I've watched it live where it's had to go to VAR. It's always been... Um, seen by the, the semi-automated. There is the odd occasion it would have to revert to what VAR is right now, but in general, this gets it right 99% of the time or something. I think it's a big step forward. Take it as much away from those fellas wearing the full kits in a unit in uh, Stockley Park as uh, much as you can. Take it out of their hands and uh, we'll all deal with it. That is it for the News Daily. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. See you later.